Welcome back to Spect. Today I'm going to be painting up this blight hauler straight from the Conquest magazine. Now I told you I would paint this at a later point. So I've built it, I've put it together and it looks beautiful, it's a bit of a beast. But I want to, you know, work this thing over a bit. <laughs> so I'll make sure to remove all the items before I base coat it and I want to base coat it black. I mean you could do this brown and that's no problem. But the reason why I want to go with black is I want this effect that I have here in this tank uh, that my daughter painted up for me and I want to keep it all together so that you know that high kind of rust brown walnut colors that's what I'm going for so I'll spray the tank black or the blight holder I should say made sure to remove all the bits when I did that so you get in color everywhere there's nothing worse than catching that little bit of green after you spent all that time sponging it. And when I say all that time, I mean like, you know, maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> so I start with uh, brown. It looks kind of orange here on camera, but it's because it's more to the orange side. It's a good, strong mix. I just dab that all over the machine. That doesn't take very long. Make sure to work into the treads because you're going to need it. As you see there, it's dry back brown. And now I'm going with some Death Guard. Now, if you're going with something like, you know, maybe the Poison Chalice or the Corpse Makers, you could just stop with the, uh, the brown colour and then come back in with the rust and just be heavy with that and you'll be fine. But really what I'm going for is more like the, the Putrid Choir or the Pallid Hand. I kind of want that faded kind of look. So we need to add the colour in there to then move it away and remove it. So just take your time, sponge it in. Because you're dabbing off most of the paint, this doesn't take very long. Again, two, three minutes at best. Try and make sure you get the top inside of the front guard there because it gives a really nice effect when we come back to it later. Don't worry if you paint on anything which you'd need to overpaint later. It all adds to the effect. Now I'm going for a bright silver here. I'm using a storm host silver. I'm touching the edges, just dabbing it on, and I'm not using very much. I'm sticking to the highest areas, edges. You know, I didn't like that too much. I'm just brushing it away lightly, just dab it off. And then just work your way around. Now, if you're going to be leaving something with the, maybe, I don't know, the Apostles of Contagion, if you come in with a white just before this, you could pretty much end it here and you'd be okay. But, you know, I'm not going to leave it as that. I touch the treads with it. I want a bit heavy, but that's okay. Now, the Athonian camo shade is going to be used for the little areas where there's little uh, pox and we'll put them in there little dents and it's not too much just to give a bit of contrast chuck some on tracks to discolor them I mean you could always use Agrax or you could use none oil but I just want something a little different I always like that when I pick up my vehicles I can tell them mine Dab it on, more so than push it, just dab it on, and that's it. It's a lot of fun doing this actually. Just take your time, won't take long. Now this is my null oil. Again, because it's so little and I'm just touching it on, it dries in seconds. You know, don't be afraid, don't forget the chains and the inside of the mechanics there and the wheels for the tank. And just dab it and that's it. Again, if you forget anything at this point, it's not the end of the world. It's just straightforward. You can really see the effect that it's having there. So I'll come back with a touch of silver just to touch the edges, just the right edges where we wash down, just to bring that back again. 
I could have waited to the end to do this, but you know, just one pass. Pretty much the brush has got a combination, a little bit of that wash and the silver. Kind of want a muggy look. Now I touch the top edges there uh, using the brush just onto the mortar and the gears underneath there. Just go over a few edges. Just the uh, viewer's port there. And anywhere there are like little pox, I just kind of like touch again and go over. You can see the brown coming through. Now I'm going with an orange. I mean, you could use rust. I just basically use the same orange that I use on the flames and just dab that straight on. And it already makes it look like it's rusting because of the way the sponge is porous. Because I'm not pushing all the way down and you can see the effect. Although it looks really bright, it will dry back a little bit. So it will start to become dull again. And this is why we started with that kind of orangey brown because it adds like an additional layer to begin with. And I find it makes it look just a bit more believable. <laughs> as believable as it can be for this major tank. Now, if you're going for like major rust here, I mean, Mouldering Claw, maybe Gloom Lords, this will work well for for Death Guard, you know, and that that would be it. But because I'm gonna add gold to this, like gold trimming, and not iron-based trimming, I'm not gonna want too much of this. But what it does is just inside the grill, uh, for the dozer ram, you've got like a rusting effect at the base there, which adds to the weathering right next to that brown. I mean, you could call this done at this point if you wanted to. But you know me. Let's take it a step further. Always check it over as you do this because you don't want to add too much. Just have a little think about where the water would be, where water can collect and just called rusting. I mean, it's Nurgle, man, whatever. It, it lives everywhere. Rust is everywhere, decay is everywhere, pits everywhere. All right, I get some um, gold. I think it's Liberator Gold. Can't remember right now. And just really water it down and just run it across. Just, just once, really water down. So all the work that we've done previously, you can see just coming straight through. So the gold changes color, kind of acts as a tinge. You can see there. So we're picking up all the oranges and the greens and the blacks and the browns that we've already added. And it makes it a lot easier. And I'm just pushing that liquid as far as I can, which is there so it wasn't thick. And if you do start placing the gold, I suggest place it along the top of the rim. Uh, near the back of the dozer blade again just because that'll be where the most gold I believe would still be the stuff at the bottom would be worn away so just check it over there you can see and I'm just going to do the anti-infantry deterrence there that's what I call them more spikes <laughs> just be careful when you're holding this device and just go over it take your time there's no rush So, I mean, at this point, I think I was at best 15 minutes, and that's after the um, base had dried. So I knew what colors I wanted. So again, I'll look it over, take a closer look. Is there anything I've missed out on that I want to highlight? And I'll come in with Stormhost Silver. Just in the edges. And what I'm thinking here is, you know, Nurgle's tarnished this whole vehicle and also pops highlights, but you know, no matter how clean or pure they are, and that's a symbol for gold really, uh, it just gets worn away, just corrupted and eaten away. And that's what I'm gonna think of when I put it on the table. Once I've done all the edges, just go around and check again. Just always look at it, because you don't want to clean off your brush and there's more that could be done. this point I want to add in my highlight yellow and I'm using this throughout my army and this is a theme 
kind of like a toxic colour. So it's a combination of acid or just vile effluence and, and putrefaction. There we go. <laughs> and I'm just going around the outside. Now this paint, strangely enough, acts as an oil, uh, oil-based paint and an acrylic. It's really unusual. Uh, I just picked it up from like the hardware store for a pound, but it's, it's really cheap. And I just fill in all the holes, all the holes that I see, just drag it down for weather and effect. And then once I've got my base, you can see where the green has spilled over. If you was using a, a mold based kind of uh, lesion, you could just kind of amp that up. What I then do is come back in with a white and I fill in more of those holes and just pull it away to add to the weather effect you can see there after that's dried. And then you could even go back in afterwards just to pull through more color with that original yellow on top of the white. As you can see there. Just double check it once it's dried. I'm happy with that. In fact, so happy. Let's take a few pictures. So hopefully that was easy for you to follow along and it fits in beautiful with my Death Guard army. As you can see, it's building from the Conquest magazine and uh, it all holds its own. What colors will you paint yours? I would love to see. And if you do want to send in pictures, uh, that you can email them to me directly at my Gmail and I'll be doing a community post I think within the next few days I've got time. As you can see up close, that's worked out really well and I am actually really happy with that seeing it on big screen. The intensity and colour looks good. I can't wait to get that on the table. Now I have done both sets of weapon options there so you can see them. Well this has been spec'd. I've enjoyed my time, I hope you've enjoyed yours. PC, out.